This month is turning into a fiery one for the space industry. We just witnessed Blue Origin's new Glenn make history a few days ago by landing its booster on a ship in the ocean for the first time, and now ULA has finally launched the Atlas V after a long break. But one thing is becoming very clear. None of these companies can make their launches as smooth and consistent as SpaceX. And just like Blue Origin's mission, ULA's launch also ran into several problems before liftoff, and we're going to break down exactly what happened in this video. Before we dive in any deeper, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future updates. After a very long time, ULA finally launched the Atlas V. But this launch showed clearly how many problems the company is still facing. The mission itself was a normal communication satellite delivery, something Atlas V has done many times. The real issue was everything that happened before liftoff. The launch was delayed again and again because a liquid oxygen vent valve on the booster was not working properly. ULA had to stop the countdown more than once, take the rocket back to the building, change the part, and bring it out again. Only after all that did the Atlas V finally take off. Yes, the rocket performed perfectly once it left the pad, but it took way too much effort to get there. Atlas V is one of ULA's most trusted rockets. It started flying in the early 2000s and has completed close to 100 missions with almost perfect reliability. It stands around 60 meters tall, depending on the configuration, and uses the RD-180 engine on its first stage. That engine burns kerosene and liquid oxygen and produces close to a million pounds of thrust at liftoff. The upper stage uses the RL-10 engine, which is known for being extremely efficient in space. Atlas V can lift almost 20 tons to low Earth orbit and nearly 9 tons to geostationary transfer orbit. It has carried everything from government payloads to interplanetary probes, making it one of the most capable rockets of its generation. The problem is that Atlas V is retiring. Only a few Atlas V rockets are left, and once they fly, the system is gone for good. One of the main reasons is the engine Atlas V uses the RD-180, a Russian-built engine, and the United States decided years ago that national security missions should not depend on foreign hardware. Because of that, ULA was forced to move away from Atlas and create a new fully American rocket, which became Vulcan. Atlas V is also outdated. It first launched in the early 2000s, and while it's extremely reliable, the design is from an era where rockets were single-use. Everything on Atlas V is single-use. The booster, the solid boosters, the fairing, even the upper stage. Nothing comes back, which makes every launch expensive. An Atlas V mission typically costs around $110 to $150 million. By comparison, a Falcon 9 launch costs around $60 million, and the booster can be reused many times. In simple terms, Atlas V can cost about double the price for a similar class of mission. The cost gap exists because ULA builds Atlas V with older manufacturing methods and expensive components. The RL-10 upper stage engine alone costs several million dollars, and it's thrown away every mission. ULA is now hoping to replace the Atlas V with Vulcan, but Vulcan already has problems of its own. The rocket was originally supposed to fly in the late 2010s, but it kept slipping because its main engine, the BE-4, wasn't ready. Blue Origin had repeated issues with the engine and delays in building enough units for testing. For years, ULA could not move forward because they simply didn't have engines to work with. In some years, Blue Origin delivered only a very small number of engines, far below what ULA needed. Even after the engines arrived, they weren't perfect. Several BE-4 units needed rework after testing showed inconsistent performance. And for ULA to reach a normal launch rate, they need dozens of engines every year, something Blue Origin has never produced before. The first Vulcan flight reached orbit, but engineers still noticed behavior in the upper stage that needed more evaluation. Then, on another early mission, one of Vulcan's solid boosters had a nozzle issue where part of the nozzle broke off during ascent. Because of all this, Vulcan's launch rate is far below what ULA originally promised. 
The company once said Vulcan would fly many times a month and replace both Atlas and Delta quickly. Instead, the rocket is expected to complete only a few missions across the entire year. This whole list of problems is putting real financial pressure on ULA. They bring in around $2.6 billion in revenue per year, which sounds big, but their costs remain very high. Meanwhile, SpaceX is scaling far beyond that. SpaceX's revenue in recent years is estimated at around $35 billion annually, and they launch dozens of missions each year, sometimes more than 50 ULA by comparison, launches often fewer than 10 missions annually. Even on a yearly basis, the numbers clearly show SpaceX pulling ahead with many more launches at a much lower cost per mission. All of this has led to real rumors that ULA might be sold. The estimated price being mentioned is only a few billion dollars, far lower than what a major launch provider would normally be worth. Meanwhile, Blue Origin recently did something almost nobody expected. They finally landed the new Glenn booster. This was only the rocket's second flight, and because the first launch failed to stick the landing, most people assumed this one would end the same way, but this time they actually pulled it off. On the first launch earlier in the year, New Glenn reached space, but the booster couldn't execute its landing burn correctly. The engines didn't restart the way they were supposed to, the descent wasn't stable, and the booster ended up lost in the ocean. That failure created a lot of doubt, because New Glenn had already been delayed for years, mostly due to problems with the BE-4 engines. So going into the second attempt, expectations were low. Then launch day arrived. After multiple weather delays and solar activity concerns, New Glenn finally lifted off. All seven BE-4 engines ignited, the rocket cleared the tower smoothly, and the ascent looked clean. A few minutes into flight, the first stage separated and began its fall back toward Earth. This is where everyone expected trouble again. But instead, the booster flipped around, reignited its engines, and stabilized its descent. Around the eight-minute mark, the landing burn began. The booster lined itself up with Blue Origin's massive ship waiting in the Atlantic. A few seconds later, it touched down vertically, surprising almost everyone who saw it live. After years of delays, engine issues, and a failed landing attempt, New Glenn finally proved it could launch and recover its booster in one piece. New Glenn itself is a huge rocket, much larger than Falcon 9. It stands around 90 meters tall with a 7-meter diameter. The first stage carries seven BE-4 engines running on methane and liquid oxygen, giving it far more thrust than Falcon 9. In terms of lifting capability, New Glenn can carry almost twice as much mass as Falcon 9 in some configurations. It was built with reusability in mind from the start, with the goal of flying each booster many times once the system matures. But bigger doesn't automatically mean better. SpaceX has been landing and reusing boosters for years, with some Falcon 9 stages flying more than 15 times. They also launch extremely often, sometimes multiple times in the same week. But Blue Origin still needs to prove that New Glenn can fly regularly, not just once every several months. Another major difference is reliability and track record. Falcon 9 has completed hundreds of flights and has become the most dependable rocket in Operation New Glenn. On the other hand, is only two launches into its career. And while the second landing was a huge milestone, the program still faces big challenges Blue Origin must deliver engines consistently, increase its production speed, and show that the landing success wasn't a one-time event. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.